Watching Gears, brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to Gears and the next step in the stunt double project. Now, if you're just seeing this project for the first time, then you have missed a lot. So let's bring everybody up to speed. It started out as a well-worn 86 long bed 4x4 Chevy. that we wanted to build into a modern version of the iconic Fall Guy truck from the 80s TV show. So we lifted it and we beefed up the suspension and the brakes and the axles to handle some rough use. It's like a giant game of operation. We kept the motor old school with a small block Chevy. But the 500 horsepower Blueprint crate engine and the performance automatic 4L80E transmission are far beyond what came stock in this truck, both in the drivability and the performance departments. Who put that starter there? Then we restore the body. Squirt it on some candy root beer and gold paint. And other finishing touches that pay tribute to the legacy of the unknown stuntman in a modern way. Today we're going to be jumping back into the interior of this beast and the first thing we're going to do is assemble those doors. Now as you can see we already have the handles and the locks in place and the doors are adjusted. So we just need to put the guts in them. And the first thing you need to decide on something like this is are you going to run manual windows or power windows? Because the trucks were available either way and LMC's got all the parts to go either way. But there is some cost and time involved in swapping one way or the other. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you're converting from manual windows to power windows, obviously you're going to need the power lift assemblies and the motors for each side. Then you're going to need the switches for the doors and the wiring harnesses. And then you're going to need a heavy duty relay harness as well. Then you'll need to put a hole in the forward edge of the door and the cab to run the wiring into the door. And these holes can only be drilled with the door or the front fender off. So factor that into your labor. Then you'll need a protective shroud for the wiring. Then you'll also need to modify the door panel for the switches. And finally, you'll have to wire the switches into an accessory outlet in your wiring harness. Now, obviously, converting from power windows to manual windows is a whole lot cheaper and easier because you don't need all of this stuff. All you need is a couple of regulators and a couple of handles. But you'll still have the holes in the door that will need to be capped, and you'll need a new door panel that is set up for a single window crank instead of the factory power switches. All right, with that decided, let's talk about the parts that you're going to use. Because anytime you can reuse original parts, obviously you're going to save yourself some money. And just because they're old doesn't mean that you can't reuse them. A lot of times these can be cleaned up, re-greased, and reused. But you will need to check them for damage and wear. For example, on a regulator, you'll want to check the teeth on the gears to make sure that they're not all buggered up. You want to check the bushings in the shaft, make sure it's not loose. And you'll want to check these Delrin bushings and make sure they're not cracked like this one is. That's why we replaced this unit. Okay, with everything cleaned up and greased, install the window regulator. Okay, the windows are next and fortunately ours are in good shape. But these frames are notorious for rusting out like this. So we'll carefully work the old glass out of the channel. Then 
Then install some new LMC frames and filler strips on the original glass. Some soapy water will help this slide on easier. Next, slide the window into the door and into the regulator arms. The bushings need to slide into the grease channels, starting with the front, so it's going to take some maneuvering. For manual windows, the regulator needs to be in the fully down position to line up the slots. The vent window assemblies are next, and just like the doors, you can get all the parts to restore your originals, or you can get complete replacements from LMC. Now, this includes new glass, new weather stripping, new window channel, everything. This is a nice option if yours are rusted out. The vent window slides in front of the window glass. And the rear door glass channel mounts to the rear of the window glass. Then the outer window seal pops in place on the door. And finally comes the rubber weather stripping that goes around the glass and gives it a rubber channel to move up and down in. It pops in place in the upper corner and then just feeds into the metal channels around the perimeter. All right, with all the components in place, you want to roll the windows up and down to make sure everything's working properly. Now, if you've got any tight spots or binding, you can take care of that by adjusting the tracks on either side or the regulator. Look at this. This is nice. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are putting the finishing touches on the interior of the stunt double. Now, we've got our doors all assembled with new windows and weather stripping and latches and all of that. Now we're going to move on to the door panels and the dash. Okay, for the square body GM truck, you had a couple of options when it came to door panels. You had the regular door panel that covered about half the door. Then it, this was left open here at the bottom, just bare metal. Then the deluxe interior, you had a carpeted piece that went across the bottom and covered up this. And most people would put that on because that's the first place you would cut the door to put speakers. <laughs> but we're not going to do either one of those. We're going to use these door panels we showed you a while back that LMC calls the Signature Series. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that they go all the way down, so it's a one-piece panel. That's really cool. And they come pre-upholstered, so that's really nice. Then as far as style, they keep the same factory armrest and pull here. They do away with this pole, which was notorious for doing that. They keep the stock latch, and then you have all kinds of room up here to put manual windows or power windows, whatever you're going to run. Now, my favorite part, though, is the fact that it has a fiberglass panel. So it's not going to deform over time. It's not going to get wet and get nasty. And if you ever want to change the upholstery, you just reupholster it. All right, let's put these in. The panels come with holes pre-cut in the fiberglass for manual window cranks, so it's just a matter of cutting the upholstery to let the shaft through. Then install the door handle cups. This is what gives the panel strength when you pull the door shut. Then just slide the door panel in place and snap it on. And we'll finish it off with some new trim pieces. Now for window cranks, we need something strong. So we're going to use these brushed aluminum ones from Locar for the finishing touch. Now, you got to admit, that's a good looking door panel. But we're not stopping there, no. If you're familiar with the square body Chevys at all, you know that the dash and the gauges were not the best fitting, most performance parts. No, the dash always did this kind of stuff. <laughs> and the gauges 
were, well, basically that thou shalt not drive faster than 85. So we're going to upgrade the gauges to this cluster from Classic Instruments. Now, as you can see, it gives you modern gauges in a cluster that's designed to fit right in place of the original one, so it's going to fit your factory bezel. But the best part is this will work with any engine that you're going to put in, and it'll work with an original wiring harness or an aftermarket wiring harness. While we're in here, it's also a good time to install the vintage air controller and the new vents. For the dash, we're going to replace that as well for obvious reasons. We're not going back stock. No, we're going to step up to this signature series dash that's going to match those door panels perfectly. Now, as you can see, it's all pre-upholstered just like the door panels were. You got vents stitched in place, and you've got all the right openings in the right place. And it also has the fiberglass backing that's going to give you a nice firm foundation to mount your stock trim pieces. Now, even though these dashes are made to fit these trucks, don't expect the trim to pop in and fit perfect. Be prepared to do some trimming of the fiberglass and the vinyl to make sure the vents fit into the openings properly. Now, speaking of the vents and trim, these are areas where a project can slow down on you a little bit because anytime you add a bunch of aftermarket upgrade parts, like a different steering column, wiring harness, air conditioning, that kind of stuff, it takes some time to make them all work together right, as opposed to just bolting on a bunch of original parts like you would in a level one or two restoration project. No, your level threes, level fours, and level fives take a little bit more time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the stock ducting for the heat and air conditioning on a square bodied Chevy. Now notice the size of the hose here. Well, this is the size of hose that Vintage Air uses. <laughs> yeah, not gonna work. So they've got special adapters that need to be put on and they also have an adapter that goes on the original panel here that needs to be put on. And then they've got some adapters on the original bezel. If you'll notice, you put your new roller in there that on and then the adapter pops on like this. Then you're ready for vintage air hoses. All right, once you have everything modified, you're ready to put the dash in and it just slides in at the top under the windshield and then mounts under the dash using the factory holes. The new bezel is next, and once again, if you've done your pre-fitting, it should slide right into place. Okay, with the seat back in, this is starting to look like a truck again, but with a modern twist because now we have an upgraded dash and door panels, modern wiring, gauges, steering column, air conditioning, all without losing the classic square body look. Exactly what we had in mind for the stunt double. But to get the full effect of just how cool this interior is, you gotta step back and see how it all works together with the rest of the truck. Yeah, I don't think there's a stuntman around that wouldn't want to spend some seat time in this rig.
And now, Break Tech, brought to you by Bear Brakes, brakes without limits. When it comes to a brake system, most people understand how disc brakes work and drum brakes and what the master cylinder does. Where they get a little foggy is all of these little valves, like the proportioning valve and a combination valve and residual valves and a metering valve and what they do and how you use them. We're going to try to clear some of that up for you. First up is the proportioning valve. Now this is designed to control the rear brakes and how much rear braking you have. Remember, in most automotive brake systems, you have about 60% braking in the front and about 40 in the rear, so the car stops evenly. A factory combination valve has the right proportioning valve built right into it. However, if you change or upgrade your brakes, you may need to change to an adjustable proportioning valve so you can dial in your rear brakes. The metering valve is also found inside of a combination valve and it regulates the pressure to the front brakes on a front disc rear drum combination and keeps those front discs from grabbing before those rear drums and giving you jerky stops. If you're running four wheel discs, the metering valve is not needed. The brake pressure switch is simply a switch to indicate pressure in the lines when you hit the brake pedal. It sends a signal to your brake lights and it turns them on and it can be mounted by itself or in a multi-valve setup. Okay, clear so far? <laughs> All right, now let's talk about how you might use these and what some of the variables are. This is an adjustable proportioning valve. This is something that you would use if you've modified your stock brakes. This is a combination valve. It has a non-adjustable proportioning valve built in, the pressure differential switch built in, and the metering valve built in. So this is for a front disc rear drum setup. This is for a custom four-wheel disc setup for like a hot rod or a race car. You have the adjustable proportioning valve for adjusting the amount of rear brakes. You have the full junction block and the pressure switch for your brake lights. Okay, finally there are the residual valves and these little guys mount right in the brake line and they come in two different poundages. The 10 pounders are for drum brakes and they put pressure in the line to keep the shoes out close to the drum to give you a higher, firmer pedal. The two pounders are used with disc brakes and you only use them if the master cylinder is mounted lower than the calipers. The residual valve keeps just enough pressure in the line to keep the brake fluid from draining back into the master cylinder. And that's it. As you can see, it really is pretty simple once you understand what everything does. But you can also see how easy it is to get something just a little out of whack and end up with a brake system that doesn't work properly, especially if you're buying these valves used at a swap meet or a salvage yard. So it's better to do your research and buy your valves new so you get the brake parts that you need for the system that you're using. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Ron Lassley, and he's from Kentucky, and Ron is a pastor, but he is not your typical pastor. He's 75 years old, and he says, I'm a race car driving, motorcycle riding, street rod building pastor. Man, I want to go to your church, man. That sounds awesome. Now, he says his project, check this out. He found a four-door Chevy. The frame had a four-link in it, had a straight axle in the front, but there were no doors and no floors, but he couldn't resist it. So he bought it, and then he took it to a friend's barn who had a concrete floor. Nice to have those kind of friends. And he said work began. Now, here's what they did. The first thing he did is he welded up the rear doors, and he turned it into a panel. Then he built a custom front end and grill. Then he slapped in a 292 straight six with Weber carbs and headers. Man, what a great engine choice. Now he says he's not done with the project yet, but it is driving and he and his wife take it out and cruise it all the time. And I bet they have a great time. What a cool project. So Ron, to recognize such a cool project, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab. We're gonna give you one of these tubing notchers, which I'm sure you could have used on this project and you'll definitely be able to use it on your next one. 
Then we're going to give you one of our V8 Interceptor t-shirts because obviously you're used to fire and brimstone. And we're going to give you one of our deluxe project planning books so you can keep track of everything that you have done on that project. Then we're going to give you one of our Sergeant Rock die casts. And we're going to give you a gift card from Holly to help offset some of the cost of your project. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, get your project featured on the show, man, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation so you can stream any of our episodes commercial free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime where you can watch past and current seasons of Gears and check out our new show, Stacy David's Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes footage of our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Hopefully you feel inspired to get out there and start working on something. It doesn't have to be a square body. It can be an old four-door sedan that you turn into a panel. The only limitations in the car world is your imagination. We'll see you next time.